Hello everyone. The liturgical year, also known as the church year, is organized into a three-year cycles, year A, B and C for Sundays and year 1 and 2 for weekdays. Each year is divided into six seasons, Advent, Christmas, Lent, Sacred Paschal Tridium, Easter and Ordinary Time, plus several feasts and solemnities between the seasons. The year begins on the first Sunday of Advent and ends on the Feast of the Christ the King at the end of November. Friends, Biblical readings and prayers for Masses, color of vestments worn by the priests, appropriate season and feast during the year, are laid out in a yearly liturgical calendar. Moreover, the Church also recommends specific sanctuary decorations according to different seasons. Most of the liturgical traditions and customs have evolved over the centuries and are observed by the whole Church. Friends, on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation and on special feast days, three readings are read. The first reading is mostly from the Old Testament. The second reading is taken from the writings of an Apostle. And the third reading is from one of the Gospels. In year A, we read from the Gospel of Matthew. In year B, we read the Gospel of Mark. And in year C, we take the Gospel of Luke. We read from the Gospel of John during the Easter season in all three years. Friends, today with the start of the Advent season, we begin the liturgical year C and our study of the Gospel of Luke. The Advent season spans four Sundays and four weeks leading up to Christmas, when we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Originally, However, there was little connection between Advent and Christmas. What is Advent? The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming, which is a translation of the Greek word parousia, commonly referring to the second coming of Christ. Friends, the origins of Advent can be traced back to the 4th and 5th century when Christians in Spain and Gaul which at that time inhabited by Celtic tribes, encompassing present-day France, Belgium, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Northern Italy, as well as parts of the Netherlands and Germany on the west bank of the Rhine River, were required to prepare themselves for baptism. Friends, the Advent was indeed a time of spiritual preparation for the baptism of new Christians at the Feast of Epiphany, the celebration of the manifestation of Christ to the Magi, or three kings, and their visit to Bethlehem. As part of their preparation from the feast of St. Martin of Tours on November 11th to Epiphany, the new converts would observe 40 days of fasting, repentance and prayer in a 56-day period of time. Later in the 6th century, Pope Saint Gregory the Great associated this season of Advent with the coming of Christ and composed prayers and responses and preached a series of homilies appropriate for the season. However, at first, the coming did not refer to the incarnation of Christ in Bethlehem that was anticipated, but the second coming of Christ when he would return to earth to defeat evil and establish his glorious kingdom. Friends, by the 9th century, the Church had extended the advent to include the coming of Christ through his birth as a human being and his second coming. In addition to that, the number of Sundays was reduced from 5 to 4, plus the first Sunday was designated as the beginning of the Church year. Friends, to make Advent more meaningful and fruitful, the Church has recommended many symbols and traditions that are associated with Advent. 1. Advent Wreath The Advent Wreath is traditionally made of evergreen branches into a circle. While it is entirely secular and simply decorative, the Church adopted this tradition only in the 20th century and gave some meaning to it. 
The circle reminds us of God's endless love and mercy. The color green represents life and evergreen is a sign of hope and eternal life. That is to say, just as the evergreen lives through all seasons, including harsh winter conditions, God through his son Jesus Christ makes eternal life possible for us even in the midst of suffering and death. Friends, some wreaths are made of pine tree leaves or prickly dark green leaves and red berries. The prickly leaves symbolize the thorns worn by Christ on the cross and the tiny red berries represent Christ's blood. Overall, the evergreen wreath depicts the immortality of our soul and the new everlasting life promised to us through Christ's birth, teaching, passion, death and resurrection. 2. Five Candles Friends, the most common Advent candle tradition involves four candles comprising of three purple candles with one rose or pink and they are usually nestled in the evergreen wreath. A new candle is lit on each of the four Sundays before Christmas. Each candle represents something different, although traditions vary. For instance, some believe that four candles represent the four weeks of Advent. Others say that they represent the four virtues or gifts such as hope, love, joy and peace, which Jesus brings us through his coming. Yet some others think that three purple candles signify penitence and the rose candle, which is lit on the third Sunday, also known as Gaudete or Rejoice Sunday, signifies joy. A fifth white candle is placed in the middle and it is lit on Christmas Day to celebrate Jesus' birth. After all, Christ is the light that came into the world to dispel the darkness of sin and to radiate the truth and the love of God. Hence, the white candle is meant to remind us that Christ enters our dark world and casts away the darkness of sin to redeem us. He will come again as the light of the world. 3. Vestments Friends, the four most common colors for liturgical vestments worn by priests are green, white, purple or violet, and red. Like Lent, vestments of purple or violet are used during Advent. These colors are associated both with the sovereignty of Christ and with penance. However, in some tradition, a dark or deep blue is used interchangeably with purple as a way of distinguishing the hopeful expectation of Advent from the penitential nature of Lent. Blue is also a very important color in the artistic traditions of Christianity. Particularly, in many paintings, Mary is depicted wearing a blue mantle because of her significance as the mother of the Lord Jesus. So the color blue reminds us that with Mother Mary, we also await the arrival of her King and Savior Jesus. Rose-colored vestment is worn on the third Sunday as a reminder of the coming joy. 4. Floral Arrangements Friends, the Church encourages the use of fresh flowers in the sanctuary as a way of engaging in the beauty of creation, of which God is the creator and sustainer, plus to enhance the worship experience. However, as in Lent, during Advent, the floral decorations on and around the altar are discouraged so as not to reflect the anticipation of the full joy of Christmas. 5. Biblical Readings Friends, for the four weeks of Advent, the Church has carefully selected passages which talk about the messianic expectation of ancient Israel in the Old Testament, the Second Coming plus the Final Judgment, and the announcements of Christ's arrival by John the Baptist and by angels in the New Testament. 6. Music and Songs Friends, since Advent is a time of hope and of waiting patiently for the coming of the Lord, 
The church recommends the omission of the Gloria and Christmas carols until Christmas Day. Instead, she suggests the selection of a quieter, more subdued and contemplative music and songs appropriately reflecting the anticipation of the Lord's coming. It is a reminder that we as Christians wait until Christmas to celebrate Christmas. because it seems like christmas celebration gets to be earlier and earlier every year christmas is overly commercialized businesses are taking the celebration out of christmas by starting it all too early shops start advertising and selling christmas paraphernalia as early as august friends putting up christmas decorations playing christmas music and singing christmas carols too early might improve one's mood, bring up feelings of nostalgia, and evoke strong feelings of belonging in a world full of stress and anxiety. At the same time, however, getting into the Christmas spirit too early may cause Christmas fatigue, meaning it takes the happiness out of one's celebration on 25th December. Because by the time you are really celebrating, you may be tired of the music, decorations, and the overall atmosphere the actual beginning of christmas tide may feel like the end of christmas 7 penitential fasting friends even though fasting was a central aspect of advent observances in the past the church has no longer set a requirement for fasting during advent however as in lent Fasting can still be a way to spiritually prepare for Christmas. Fasting is one of the ways to show one's humility and sorrow before the Lord for our sins. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. Even though each liturgical year we follow the same course of the seasons, observe the same set of traditions and celebrate the same feasts and historical events like the birth of our Lord Jesus, We must not see this as repetitive but rather as an opportunity to participate in the saving events of Jesus as they are made present again in our lives. 2. With this new liturgical year, we begin reading the same biblical stories again. But it is repetitive in a good way. Friends, there is an old Latin proverb that says, "Repetitio est mater studiorum." It means repetition is the mother of all learning. And it is true. Every time we read the scriptures, we shall find there is still more and more to be learned out of them. The more we read and reflect, the more frequently do we discover the truth about God, his word and our relationship with him. So, when we read or hear the scriptures, we must not say, "Oh, I have read this passage so many times there is no way I can learn anything new from it nor do we become short-sighted or frustrated or annoyed or angry but rather utilize the opportunity for a deeper study of the bible and personal relationship with god 3 our liturgies are rooted in ancient tradition and symbolism We do not have to learn the intricacies of these traditions and practices. However, we can utilize them to deepen our understanding of the Catholic faith and integrate them into the liturgical celebrations to create a meaningful time of reflection as part of our worship service. 4. Even though there are no particular rules on how we should observe fasting during Advent, I recommend observing some form of fast. We can resist the instant gratification, materialism and gluttony that increasingly characterize Christmas celebrations and we can give the money saved to the poor or to charities. 5. Friends, today we regard Advent as a time to prepare our minds and hearts not only to celebrate the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem over 2000 years ago and his second coming in power and great glory at the end of time but also his coming in all the events of daily life especially through the sacraments the scriptures the community and at the moment of our death hence 
while we prepare ourselves with the lights and decorations, joyful songs, shopping and food, we must also truly share in the ancient longing for the coming of the Messiah and be alert to his coming. We must reflect on the scriptural promises and purify our hearts by repentance, renew our minds according to God's ex expectations and transform ourselves into Christ's image. Amen. I wish you all a good preparation. God bless you.